What's going on guys? It's Tommy from the 1313 Podcast and I'm coming at you with a Hot Toys review. Now today I'm going to be reviewing Hot Toys Clone Trooper Jesse in the 1 6th scale. Now uh, this is made by Hot Toys but I did pick it up at Hot Comics and Collectibles. Shout out to Jeff, Josh, and Steve over at Hot Comics and Collectibles. They are based out in the Minneapolis, Minnesota area. Uh, just recently, if you want to check out our vlog, I did go on a trip over there with Jackson of the 1313 podcast and hybrid toy reviews. We met up with Skywalker Hendrix and 212 Hunter, and we went out looking for some goodies one of the days that we were out there in the Minneapolis area. We stumbled upon this store. These guys are actually the Hot Toys distributor for that area. So uh, those guys are awesome. I just want to give a huge shout out to them. If you're ever in the Minneapolis area, make sure to go check out Hot Comics. Tell them 1313 sent you. Um, those guys are awesome, and they gave us some. Uh, some of the best memories we've ever had uh, collectible hunting. Um, they also have a great Black Series collection and uh, all different brands of stuff. So I'd highly recommend checking them out. So looking at Clone Trooper Jesse here, this is actually Arc Trooper Jesse uh, from season seven of the Clone Wars. We saw him in the Bad Batch arc as well as the Siege of Mandalore arc. Um, this guy is kind of takes the place of fives as Rex's uh, secondhand man in the 501st. So it's really cool to get uh, this figure added to my collection of 501st Hot Toys. So looking at the packaging, this is the standard packaging right now for Hot Toys. You have the nice image of the figure taking up the, about two thirds of the box here, the reflective Star Wars logo below that, and then a little piece of wraparound paper that has uh, another picture of Jesse here with his helmet off. He does have a swappable head as well as his name down here. And then on the side of the box, you just have again the name and then it's also on the packaging itself. And then on this side as well, you do have another image of Jesse. Pretty cool that they have multiple images of the character on the packaging. And then on the back, of course, you have all your legalese. On the top of the box, you do have another Star Wars logo in that nice reflective color. And on the bottom of the box, you also have a Star Wars logo. So with that being said, I'm excited. Let's get this guy opened and we'll check him out. So we'll just lift the lid off this box here. And one of the things that Hot Toys does, and I really should get all these framed one day, is putting a another image of the product, this being not the same as any of the other images we saw in the box on the front. You can also see your Hot Toys Captain Rex in the background there. Uh, just a nice little image of this character, and they do this for all of their Star Wars products. It's very, very cool. So then we'll just, again, there's no tape or anything. We'll just pull this off, and here we have Jesse with all of his plethora of accessories. So I'm pretty stoked to check Jesse out. So we'll get him unpacked and check out his accessories. So as with most of your Hot Toys products, you're gonna get this little base here. Now this one is really nice. I like that all the ones for the 501st clones are very uniform. And then on the front, you do have the reflective plaque that does say Clone Trooper Jesse. This does have some wrap over it so that you don't uh, get that scratched in the packaging but there you go, looks pristine as all products from Hot Toys do. And then of course you have your little crotch grabber for the stand here. So what you do is you just kind of plug this into the bottom of the stand. As you can hear, it does clip in very nicely. That clips into place very securely. It's not gonna go anywhere once it's in. And this crotch grabber is extendable and it actually comes completely out. You can put that in, replace it with something else if you want but you can lift up the crotch grabber up and down. Very nice for characters that do not have jet packs. Again, we'll set this off to the side. And as you can see, Jesse can stand on his own just fine. So let's take a closer look at him. Starting off with all the details near the helmet, you'll see that Jesse has a nice dark gray and Republic cog up on his helmet, as well as that black brow that's painted all the way across. That blue is also very, very nice. It's that same shade of blue that matches all the other 501st Hot Toys, minus the newer ones that are coming out for the live action shows. Uh, these ones are kind of Hot Toys own creations and they really do their own thing when it comes to these. But as you can see, there's all types of weathering on the paint. You'll see where it's kind of worn away or on the white parts of the helmet, there's just kind of carbon scoring and other forms of weathering. This guy looks fantastic. Hot Toys knocks it out of the park every single product every inch of this figure is weathered you know you're not going to find a piece that's pristine i know on a lot of like you know six inch figures and things like that you're going to have a lot of pieces that are not done this way but in all of the hot toys you're going to have that look at that shine on the visor as i move the figure around my lights catching it it's just they 
put so much attention to detail into these and I always make sure to praise them. Another thing that's awesome about Hot Toys, if you didn't know, every piece of armor is loosely attached to the body glove. So none of these pieces of armor are sculpted into the bodysuit or, you know, glued to the bodysuit. It's all its own thing. Jesse's got a nice pauldron here. It sits up nicely, doesn't flop down onto the shoulders like you see. A lot of times when people try to cosplay ARC Troopers, uh, they have issues with the pauldron staying up. This figure has a very stiff plastic for the pauldron, so you'll see that, that you have no issues with that. And then moving lower onto the figure here, you'll see that in the belt area, all of these little straps and everything are free floating. The holsters for the blaster pistols are also free floating. It's also a very nice touch. They, it's nice because as you move the legs, they kind of naturally get out of the way for you. You don't have to worry about making sure these don't get caught up in all the other strapping that's set around the waist area. And then again, just looking at the details on the comma, the, the fact that they weathered the comma is just a huge, huge detail that I love they included. And then down here you have the gray at the knee pads looking really, really nice as well as all that blue. And again, I can keep making comments about all the weathering and all the little tiny details that go into these figures. It's just fantastic the way they do them. Real quick, just to cover articulation, you do have a ball joint at the neck. This gives you a lot of attitude. You can actually make him chicken his head back and forth, which is nice with that uh, neck joint there. And he does have some nice tilt, things like that. So that's nice. The shoulders do get up to 90 degrees. Another thing that's great about these guys is that the armor pieces do not get in the way with these figures. So that's always something that I'm appreciative of. The elbows do get up to 90 degrees, which is nice. There is a pose I want to try with him towards the end of the review here. So I'm hoping that the articulation is not too limited. But with all these armor pieces, you really shouldn't expect the acrobatic articulation you would get with a Jedi. And then, of course, they do have hinges at these wrists here. Um, these hands can be removed. I'll show you some of the other hand options in a minute. Um, these shoulders are on a ball joint as well, I should make sure to mention. So they do have that butterfly joint effect as well as you can roll the shoulders. He does have a little bit of midsection articulation, but I wouldn't expect too, too much out of a figure like this again, just because of all of the armor pieces. And while I'm on the topic of the armor here, I just wanna add the belt is separate from the cod, which is separate from the midsection, which is separate from the chest piece, which is very accurate to real clone armor that people make in the 501st, so that's awesome. And then down here at the hip joint, you have a ratcheted joint. It can get some really nice range. This guy can sit down. You can get him into a seated position, and then of course, you can lift these thighs up. You can see all the strapping and the comma gets out of the way when you do that. He's got double jointed knees that give you a nice bend that goes past that 90 degree mark. And then he does have a little ball joint down here at the ankles as well. Doesn't give you some crazy articulation, but it's enough. It gets the job done. So he's got some solid, solid articulation. Now moving on to some of his accessories. So Jesse does come with some extra hand options. He comes with three options for his right hand and then two options for his left hand. So as you can see, he just kind of has idle hands right now and you can actually switch those out with, you have an open hand right here. All of these have painted detail on the hand plates, the same as the regular ones do. He has one where he's kind of pointing with two fingers. This is one that is pretty common with some of the commander characters. And then he also has a trigger finger hand, which is really cool. And I'm definitely gonna probably be swapping out for the trigger finger hands for those blaster pistols. For the left hand options, Jesse does have a pointing hand, like a number one, or a nose picking hand, depending on what kind of a person you are. And then he also has a left trigger finger hand as well. Now, as I mentioned before, all these hands are swappable. So all you have to do to swap one of the hands is just pull at one of the wrists and your hand will separate and leaving you with the exposed peg there. And let's, in this case, we're gonna swap this out with the trigger finger hand. So just make sure your armor is pushed up so that way you can make sure it's attached, pop that into place. And now you have your new hand secured on the figure. Now this can be an issue. Sometimes people have their pegs break on the wrists. So what Hot Toys does is they actually include two extra wrist pegs. You, you just screw these in or unscrew these to get them out and then put these new ones in. So it's very, very nice. Hot Toys pays attention to detail. They know sometimes those pieces are super small. They can break, it happens. It's just the wear and tear of collecting, especially if you're an out of box collector. So it's good to have that option. Next up, we're gonna check out the extra head sculpt for Jesse. And if you just look at the detail here on this Tamara Morrison head, this thing looks real. I mean, I'm just looking at the eyes and the way that they glisten as I move it. This looks like a real person's head. I mean, this is just, 
ridiculous the amount of detail that they've attached here. I mean, the tattoo looks perfect. It actually looks like a real tattoo because when it's applied, it's applied unevenly, you know, as some of the tattoo sort of wears away. This looks great. I mean, even the occipital bone on the back of the skull here, you can see that in detail. It looks like he actually has a shaved head or, you know, the, there's pores here on his face. He's got that shaved on shaved face. It's crazy, the five o'clock shadow, everything about Hot Toys, the way they do their faces for human heads is superb and I can't praise enough the level of detail that they put into these. However, as far as my Jesse goes, I'm not going to be using that head option. I like to keep my clones helmeted. Looking at some of Jesse's weaponry, you're gonna have the DC-15A blaster. This has a nice silver dry brush done over it. Really makes a lot of the edges and sculpted details pop and you do have articulating uh, bottom here for the bottom of the blaster. So if you think that's falling off, it's not broken. It is just part of the blaster, but this does look super nice. It's got some very nice sculpted and painted detail. And of course with Jesse, you do get two DC-17 blaster pistols. Again, these are painted and sculpted the same way um, as the other blaster was. You'll see it's in that gunmetal gray with that silver dry brushing. These look very nice. And these do have some weapon storage on Jesse. You'll see, as I showed earlier, when I showed the holsters, these do holster in nicely, and they are held in there by a little bit of friction, so when you're moving the figure around, they're not gonna fall off. Gravity will do its thing with those holsters as well to keep those in there, so you don't have to worry too much, but I still would just keep an eye on them if you're moving the figure around. And then when you're attaching things like the blaster, I would definitely recommend just popping the hand off and then using these rubbery fingers. They do stretch to work your blaster into the hand. I was able to get the finger up on the trigger with no problem whatsoever and then you can just pop the hand back on and now that you have the hand popped back on now you have Jesse ready to go so he can fire his blaster and of course what would an arc trooper be without his signature backpack so they do also include this backpack which has some great paint detail along with some awesome sculpted detail a nice soft material over the magneted part so that you can stick this magnet on his back this will hold very nicely so you don't have to worry about it falling off when you're moving the figure around but over time the magnets do weaken so just be wary of that another awesome accessory that jesse comes with is going to be this little jedi communicator it's got some great paint details, some great sculpted detail, and it's also got a little hole in the top so you can stick some holograms in there. One of these holograms is going to be this Republic gunship, the LAAT. It's done in a very nice, clear, translucent blue plastic. You stick that in the communicator, you can put that in his hand, you can have him looking at the hologram. Very, very cool. Now, if you don't want Jesse to be a trooper of the Republic and you want him to be a bad guy, you could stick this Palpatine hologram on there. And with this Palpatine hologram, he can execute Order 66. Very, very cool accessory there. Another cool accessory that Jesse comes with are his macro binoculars. Now these are painted to be 501st. They have a little bit of blue striping there. And the way you put these on is very nifty. So they do offer this tool, which I've seen with some of the other Hot Toys products as far as Captain Rex, for example. So what you're gonna do is you're actually gonna pop Jesse's head off. His head comes off pretty easily. And I guess while I have the head off, we will pop the, uh, Tamara Morrison head on. That's what the Tem head looks like on. Very nice fit. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the curved side of this tool here, you push up into the helmet and it'll actually push out the little sides of the helmet here. And those look like this. Then what you do is you're gonna put these macro binoculars on over that, slip those on, and then you just push your pieces back on there. And there you go. Now that that's attached, all you have to do is just move those macro binoculars up and down. You push them, push them up a little bit onto the helmet, in natural position, and also push them down all the way. They don't go any further than this. When you pop Jesse's head back on, they work just fine. So it's a great accessory, great addition to the figure. However, he doesn't really use these in the show, so I'm gonna leave him off. And just to give you guys a couple action poses for Jesse, here is one with him raising his blaster up, getting ready to fire. Great battle pose, and as you can see, these figures do a good job of balancing on their own without the bases, but because of the price, it's good that they do include the bases. Believe it or not, I was able to achieve a one-legged running pose with this guy. I don't dare touch him, but that's a pretty damn cool pose if you ask me. And here's my best attempt at getting him into the famous pose where he's aiming at Rex and Ahsoka on the Venator. I think that this looks pretty good, um, but the pauldron does limit the articulation a little bit, but 
This is the best that I could get, and I think it looks good enough for that kind of pose. With that being said, is this worth adding to your Hot Toys collection? I'm gonna say obviously. It's a clone trooper, it's the 501st, it's an ARC trooper, and for all those reasons, I think that any clone trooper in the Hot Toys scale is worth adding to your collection. This line does a great job with these characters, they have a surprising amount of articulation, and they just come with so many cool accessories that are interchangeable between the clones in the line as well. With that being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did and you're not yet subscribed. Be sure to subscribe to the 1313 podcast. We've got awesome content coming out all the time. Be sure to follow us on our social media, all of which is linked in the description below. We've got a discord. Why don't you join it? It's free to join and you can get in touch with other Star Wars collectors in a great positive Star Wars community. If you'd like, you can join our channel membership for 99 cents a month, gives you access to all our reviews early. And in addition to that, gives you exclusive access to stickers and badges in our comment section. And if you'd like, you can go above and beyond in supporting the channel by joining our Patreon. We have three tiers to our Patreon, all of which have some amazing benefits. That's linked in the description below as well. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. I'll catch you for the next one. May the force be with you.